Hello everyone, I am Felipe Hoffa, a Google Cloud Platform Developer Advocate, and today I'm at the GitHub offices to learn about how they are using BigQuery. You might already know that BigQuery is great when you want to analyze terabytes of data in seconds, and that there are a lot of open data sets around that you can query whenever you want. But BigQuery is not only good for open data, as a lot of corporations, enterprises, companies, are using BigQuery to understand their own data, their users, their own metrics, etc. And today at GitHub, I'm going to look at both worlds. Because uh, we have a lot, at least three open data sets uh, about GitHub uh, that they are using to understand their own company. So today, Alison La from the data science team at GitHub will join me. And we will explore how they are using BigQuery and other tools and open data to understand their own organization. So, Alison, so thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, thanks for being here. Yes, uh, I know you've done great stuff here at GitHub. And before we get started, I wanted to mention to everyone how you've been doing uh, awesome stuff. Like, I went to the GitHub Universe conference, and you published this uh, GitHub Octoverse yeah, visualization. Right. And you were behind it. Yeah, uh -huh. so um, I was part of a cross-departmental team that uh -huh. helped publish this uh, infographic, if you will, all about um, the state of the Octoverse. And it has mm -hmm. a few different sections, but one of the sections is focused on open source. Mm -hmm. And it was really important to me to be able to publish those um, open source mm -hmm. metrics using the open data set and be able to publish the queries behind it for the community to reuse. Nice. So you have that Octoverse here, and it has a lot of different open source analysis. Uh, but before we get to how you made it, I would love to know how you got started in this world. Yeah, absolutely. So I got started about four years ago. I was one of the first accountants at GitHub, mm -hmm. actually. And when I started, I had never seen a terminal before mm -hmm. or seen code at all. Um, but I was really curious, so I asked a lot of questions to my coworkers and started going to meetups and eventually got to learn how to code a little bit. And using my um, analysis skills as an accountant in Excel and hacking skills that I learned from going to all these meetups, I was able to parlay that into a position on our data science team as an analyst. Nice. So you started as an accountant. You started going to meetups like? Um, so uh, all around the Bay Area, there's um, meetups, for example, Women Who Code, and there's Rails Bridge on the weekends, and Rails Girls meetups where um, I was able to make some mm -hmm. apps, and then also uh, by searching GitHub and seeing <laughs> projects, I was able to fork them and clone them um, and learn how to hack that way. Exactly. So working as an accountant at GitHub, you were able to find open data sets about GitHub, and that turned you into a data person, data analyst. That is really cool. And What kind of open data sets do, do you have available? So the open data sets that I've used on BigQuery, um, there's a few different ones. So first, there's the GitHub Archive, yeah. um, which is all of the event data. Um, so every single time someone stars or pushes or creates an issue comment or a pull request, um, that's recorded mm -hmm. as, an, as an event. And so that's one data set. It's called the GitHub Archive. Mm -hmm. It started by Ilya Grigori yeah. some years ago. Yeah, yeah exactly, a Googler. Mm -hmm. um, and then another data set is the GitHub public data set that you mm -hmm. helped publish. Yes, um, we, we recently <laughs> released that one. Yeah, that's a great one. Mm -hmm. um, it's all the um, contents of all of the repositories. And mm -hmm. that one's different from the events data because it's only repositories that have a detectable open source license. Yes, so for open source projects that we know to be open source, we are taking them and putting them on BigQuery, all of it content, the code. Yeah. So I've been able to run analysis like, hey, do we have more tabs or spaces where That's it's more really popular? Cool. That, that's been really cool. Yeah. And we are now having a third data set, a GH Torrent. That's a different project that does a pretty nice job of making all of this data of like GitHub Archive, like we have all of the events. But with the H story, we are able to see uh, everything like in different tables, normalized to see, for example, where are people coming from? Uh, yeah. What countries do they come from? Yeah, so the GH torrent includes mm. the geographic data. And mm. all of the data sets are really complementary. So it's really nice that they're all in one place on BigQuery. Exactly. And anyone can come to BigQuery, find these data sets, start doing joins between them. Yeah. Yeah. And just to show everyone what kind of queries you run, can you show me a little bit of how you work with BigQuery, your tools? 
Yeah, so we can start mm -hmm. by looking at the Octoverse and the queries that powered the open source um, section. Nice. So here's mm -hmm. the Octoverse. Yeah. So for example, this graph was pretty popular of the 15 most popular languages on GitHub by open pull request mm -hmm. and the percent changed from the previous period. I published the queries that go along with this. So here's the example of the most popular languages by pull request. Um, it's using a JSON extract uh -huh. of the events payload. So that's an important element. On the GitHub archive data set, we have a lot of data encoded as JSON. That's right. So we can do that with unstructured data. We can store a JSON so we don't have to think about columns when we're storing data. And now you need to write queries like this that extract data from JSON. Yeah, And exactly. it seems pretty easy to do. Yeah, so just by using mm -hmm. the JSON extract and then um, using you know a timestamp and choosing the mm -hmm. date range, and this is a 12-month date range, was able to do get this output of you know say the top 25 languages, um, and then changing the date range to compare it against the previous time period. Okay, so as you publish these queries, anyone can come to GitHub, take these queries, uh, copy them into BigQuery, and start running their own analysis. Exactly. Starting by your, with your queries. Exactly. So okay, you ha we have these queries on GitHub. They are exposed, and these queries run actually inside BigQuery, the the web UI. And can you, what can you tell me about the web UI? How do you use it? Oh, yes. So going to mm -hmm. the Google BigQuery, there's a couple different places where you can see the different data sets. Mm -hmm. So here is the GitHub Archive data set, and it has these different table structures. And then the BigQuery public data set is here, and under GitHub repos is where you can find all of the tables that are the repositories that we talked about, the file contents. Nice. Yeah, so the, here in GitHub repos, I have in the contents table, th that's a huge table. Uh, and if you click on it, I think it has more. If you click on details, yeah, it has 1.7, 1.9 terabytes of data now, uh, 1.7. Yeah. And then on GitHub archive, we have all of the events, and we have them organized by day, month, year. Yeah. And um, the query you uh, you were using on? Yeah, so mm -hmm. if we go back to this gist, you can just copy and paste this into the UI here on BigQuery. Mm -hmm. And it'll know to pull up this GitHub Archive day table. So we can run that query. I see. And you're running everything between, looking between 2015. So one, one year. One year of data by day. And this query goes over a lot of data. Yeah, and especially with mm -hmm. the extract of the payload to pull out the repo base language. Uh, and also, we're doing an extract of the JSON payload to make sure that it's only the action equals opened. Mm -hmm. um, so it's only counting pull requests once by when they're opened. Nice. And here we already found what were the most popular languages last year. Yeah, for this date range, then, mm -hmm. we have the output of the language name and the count of the total pull requests by language. Nice. So a reminder for everyone that wants to play with this data, uh, here, here we looked at a full year of data. But it, um, BigQuery will give you a free terabyte of querying to run your queries every month. Now, if you want to make those queries that quota last longer, instead of querying the full year when you're playing, go for a few days yeah. and then just go over yeah, the full year. Exactly. So when doing exploratory mm -hmm. analysis, I usually limit it to maybe seven days or two weeks. And then when I'm ready to look over the full date range that I want to analyze, then I'll open it up to the full date range. Nice. That's pretty cool. We analyze about how many gigabytes of data? Uh, 600. 600 gigabytes of data in 20 seconds, uh, parsing JSON in the mm -hmm. meantime. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a great tool. Nice. And uh, then, uh, you were able to take this, um, this data, these queries, and visualize them. Yeah. Yes. That was a visual designer that did all of the pretty visualizations in the Octoverse. But I've done visualizations separately in other side projects using the GitHub Archive public data set in Tableau. And then also, more, more recently, I'm using Looker. Nice. Can we take a look at, on how you use Tableau? And then we can jump to what we're doing with Looker. The project that I did using Tableau was called Open Source Monthly. And internally, we, w we wanted to just take a look at 
what was going on in mm -hmm. our organization and the repositories within the GitHub organization, the public repositories, that is. So I was able to connect Tableau mm -hmm. directly with BigQuery and pull in the events data and start to do some analysis looking at what are the most active repositories within mm -hmm. the whole org, who are the most active contributors contributing to the org, and what is the most common um, event type, whether that's an issue being created or a star or a fork, um, and just kind of get the overall view of what's going on within the organization in, in open source. Nice. And you're publishing this with Tableau, Tableau Public now? Yeah, that's right. So nice. this is all mm -hmm. public. So. So taking a look mm -hmm. at the GitHub organization for, so this is connected on a monthly basis. So November 2015 is when I did this project. Uh -huh. and, Happy birthday. Yeah, I know, one year later. It's showing that you know, the most common event type is star for, the, for our org. Hubot, mm -hmm. our robot, is the most active contributor. And then we can robot scroll it down. Leafy. Yeah, exactly. And then this is a, they call them tree maps or tree graphs of the, the rectangle equals the size of the amount of events going on in that repository. Our Git Ignore repository is super mm -hmm. active as far as events, and then Git LFS, and then yeah. our Git Hubot for this month. How do, how do you create these reports with Tableau? So I mm -hmm. create it using the Tableau workbook, which I have on my desktop, and I can do a direct connect to Google BigQuery. Nice. I just have to click Google BigQuery and enter my credentials. Mm -hmm. Let's keep your password safe. <laughs> and sign in, and then allow access. And then, so once I've connected my Tableau workbook with BigQuery, I will be able to see that it's connected to the server here, and I can select a project here are the public data sets that we can look at. But to mm -hmm. access the GitHub archive, I just type in GitHub archive. The name of the project that contains the data set. Yeah. Nice. And then scroll down and look at the data set that mm -hmm. I want to use. So I want to use the month. Mm -hmm. And I can scroll down to get the most recent complete month, um, which would be September here. And I can drag that over and update. And this mm -hmm. is like, doing you know, a select star limit 10, um, where I can see the output of the table. And just kind of overview what's in the table contents. And um, then from here, I can go to the worksheet and start dragging and dropping to do some exploratory analysis nice. using Tableau. So Tableau understands all of the columns you have here? and Yeah, it um, already knows mm -hmm. the dates should be in a date format, Booleans are true, false, mm -hmm. uh, numbers, strings. So for example, if you uh, want to know the most frequent events. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I could just select type and uh, number of records nice. and do show me um, bar chart. And, and just to get an overview, I can see if I filter this down, that push events are the most common events for this month, followed by create events, um, watch events, and issue comments. Nice. And if you want to filter these events by any way? Yeah. So mm -hmm. you can slice and dice it a couple different mm -hmm. ways. You can you know, drag the org login here to filter. And from there, it will allow you to choose, say I can choose Google uh, as the name of the organization on GitHub. Nice. So those are okay. projects hosted under the Google organization, organization yep. GitHub organization. That's correct. Nice. And w now we can see how people are interacting with these projects. Yeah, exactly. Nice. So these are the different events triggered. Mm -hmm filtered specifically on the, um, the login for the Google organization. You can see it's a different shape here. Before, mm -hmm. it was mostly push events. And the most common event type for the Google organization is a watch event, which is considered starring. Yeah. Um, How many stars did we get that month? <laughs> 15,000. 15,000 stars. No, <laughs> yeah. Not bad. Not, not bad. bad. Yeah, nice. Uh, and here, you can keep drilling in. You can look at the most popular projects, what people are doing. Yeah. But you're using not only Tableau here. That's right. Uh -huh. So recently, I got started using Looker, which is also um, an analysis tool, tool similar to Tableau. But the nice thing about Looker is it allows you to do a data connection to BigQuery, but then build a model layer where mm -hmm. it, it allows you to basically do pre-joins if you want to do it. You can do the JSON extract directly in the model layer. 
and we love it because it's all version controlled using GitHub. So taking a look, uh, here is an example mm -hmm. dashboard using the GitHub Archive latest events. So again, using a short date range, this is filtered to just the last two days. This is an example of the dashboard mm -hmm. that you can use um, to see the, the number of active users, the number of active organizations, repositories, you know, the event types, developers by commit counts, um, and again, most popular languages here by pull request count. Yes. Um, and then you can filter to any organization you want. So say we can look at Angular here and see on the dashboard that in this time period of two days, there were 530 active users, mm -hmm. anyone that interacted um, with any repositories on the Angular organization, mm -hmm. 65 active repositories. And then you can see that the most popular languages by pull request are a little bit different, JavaScript, TypeScript, HTML, nice. and Java. <laughs> nice. And the interesting thing about Looker is that it adds a layer yeah. that lo where Looker understands what the underlying data is. Yeah, so I can mm -hmm. show you that model layer. OK. So it's a model that someone has to write? That's right. But only one person at the organization needs to understand. I think mm -hmm. it helps mm -hmm. for other people to understand the model and how, uh, how it's built, but not everyone needs to know how to write um, the model layer. And so, this is GitHub's model. Yeah, so this is the model for all of the public events. And Looker's really neat because it has this IDE where it tells you what you have not committed yet. So these green lines are things that I still need to push up. Nice. Um, using GitHub? Using GitHub, yeah. Nice. <laughs> and I can just press commit changes mm -hmm. and it will push it up to the hosted Git repository on GitHub. But for example, this pull request action here, I can do this JSON extract here and then I can filter on that action. So when I go to do the analysis, I can just pick action equals opened exactly. or closed, and it allows me to you know, pick out the pre-filter and do the JSON extract here. Nice. So anyone that's working with Looker doesn't need to understand that the, some data is encoded as JSON. Yeah. Uh, the model takes care of abstracting that away. Yeah. That's yeah, really cool. Exactly. What a lot of people ask me is how to translate these interesting metrics into actionable advice. Like what kind of things uh, can you do that that translates into actions. Yeah. So something we're thinking about internally is um, open source KPIs or key mm -hmm. performance indicators using the GitHub BigQuery data sets. Um, so things like um, open source monthly active users or mm -hmm. monthly active repositories and tracking, tracking that over time. Sally, and we can look at people by region, how they are interacting with GitHub. Yeah, um, so another way to measure user engagement is looking at monthly active users and daily active users and seeing the ratio by region to see where um, some users are less engaged than others and just really by region how um, different regions are using GitHub differently. So this is really, really awesome. Uh, I love how anyone at home can start writing their own queries, finding this data set and other public data sets. Uh, any advice for someone that wants to start on this path? Yeah, so my advice would be mm -hmm. to check out the um, published queries. Um, you have some out floating around yeah. the internet. There's some in the gist that I linked in the Octoverse. Yes, we're and putting all of those links here. Yeah, check out the links below. Uh -huh. And then also check out the developer docs mm -hmm. where you can learn about the different event types and the payloads so you can understand exactly what's going on there. Nice. So we have everything documented. We have sample queries. We have sample analysis. Yeah. And uh, now it's up to you to start working with this. And as for you, please start trying out BigQuery. Find open data sets. Uh, remember that you have a monthly terabyte at no cost to run your own queries. Uh, check all of the resources we left on this video description. And I'm out for today. Thank you very much, and stay curious. Thank you, Alison. Thank you. Woo.